Hello, friends. Welcome to the 19th episode of the Schoolyard Podcast, brought to you by School Specialty. I'm your host, Nancy Chung, a fun loving teacher and content creator, also known as Fancy Nancy and Fifth on social media, and I'm thrilled that you're here. A special shout out to School Specialty, who offers essential educational supplies and complete learning environment solutions to help you transform more than classrooms. School Specialty is excited to introduce Schoolyard Connect, a new site where educators can go to find helpful resources, including blogs, webinars, case studies, sample lesson plans, and more. Go to the site that's made for educators like you, schoolspecialty.com forward slash schoolyard hyphen connect. This is the Schoolyard Podcast, a podcast by educators for educators where the magic of learning unfolds. In today's world, one issue stands out, captivating the attention of teenagers nationwide, the vaping epidemic. From fruity flavors to slick devices, vaping has become a major trend, but its consequences are anything but trivial. What starts as experimentation can quickly become a serious addiction, impacting the health and futures of countless young people. As we grapple with this modern challenge, it's crucial to understand why vaping holds such a lure and what it means for the well-being of our youth. In this compelling episode, we sit down with Marcella Bianco from Catch Global Foundation, the premier youth nicotine vaping prevention program in the nation, to discuss how we can halt the vaping epidemic sweeping through our youth and how to address the pressures that this can put on educators. With over 2.2 million students empowered and 5,500 plus schools reached across all 50 states, Catch Global Foundation offers a critical lifeline in our battle against the allure of vaping. Discover how this groundbreaking curriculum, provided free of charge to middle school and high schools, equips our communities with the tools and knowledge needed to protect our children's health and future. Welcome to the schoolyard, Marcella. Thank you so much for having me here today. Welcome. Would you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So um, my name is Marcella Bianco. I'm the Director of Government Partnerships here at Catch Global Foundation. Um, I've been with Catch almost seven years, but before that, I actually have 20 years of tobacco prevention and control experience. Mm -hmm. So I worked in the state of Florida on a political campaign, believe it or not, um, but it was with the American Cancer Society, Heart Association, Lung Association, and Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids to restore tobacco prevention funding um, throughout the um, you know, the state of Florida, which we did. We actually changed the constitution in 2006, but I'm not politically driven. Uh -huh. um, I would probably never go on a political campaign again, but it was for the kids, right? Uh -huh, for the kids, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're here. So we did, we changed the constitution, passed, um, you know, in the state of Florida in 2006. Mm -hmm. And then I went to go work as a tobacco prevention program manager at a local health department. Mm -hmm. I did that for nine years. So mm -hmm. protecting kids again, tobacco policy cessation um, before relocating to just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. So that's where I am today, uh -huh. where I was the tobacco prevention program director for the entire state at the state health department. So it took everything from the local level to the state office. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I met a lot of my national partners before coming to Catch Global Foundation, where I'm really in charge of dissemination and implementation mm -hmm. of the Catch My Breath Youth Vaping Prevention Program. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Now, I teach fifth grade, so I'm not very familiar with the whole vaping epidemic. And when I started hearing more and more about this and started researching, I would, my mind was pretty blown at, I mean, I, I'm at a K-8 school, but luckily I don't deal with any of like the vaping um, issues that's going on on the middle school side. But according to the National Institute of Health, e-cigarettes have entered the marketplace around 2007 and since 2014, just seven years after, they have become the most commonly used tobacco product among the U.S. youth. How do you think we got here? Um, so most public health advocates um, really predict that it was in 2018 when Juul um, became the most popular e-cigarette um, being used. It was almost like kids went over summer break and they came back and what did they do over summer break? They learned about this Juul device. And so wow. public health, they were just like, 
well, what is, we knew e-cigarettes were around, but it's like, what is, what is this? Mm-hmm. Um, and within less than a year, they took over 75% of the market share. Wow. And a lot of that was because of their presence on social media mm-hmm. and the influencers and the things and the ways that they marketed, not from the day when I was, you know, when I was younger, it was mm-hmm. what movie, the movie actors, actresses, and mm-hmm. the TV shows. And now it's the social media. Who's, who's, mm-hmm. who's on TikTok? who's on YouTube shorts or mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. like that. Um, and you know, Jewel started it with a high nicotine concentration. Wow. Yeah. And you know, like even at like, uh, like the popular outdoor malls and, and like indoor malls too, I see a lot of kiosks and these pens look so pretty and cute. And I'm mm-hmm. like, what is that? That is so cute. I'm like, oh my gosh, what vape e-cigarette pens? Like, like, you know, I, I was so surprised at how attractive they make them look. They're attractive and they are looking like everyday devices. So one of some of the most popular ones that we have seen in schools this year Mm -hmm. are, it looks like a highlighter (gasps) and it's actually an e-cigarette. Oh my gosh. And that was intentional on the marketing part of the e-cigarettes. Yes. It's just really sad because they're teaching our students to be, um, you know, uh, hiding things. Sneaky. Yeah. Sneaky and, and yeah, and deceptive and just, and they do this in advertising too. They meaning the e-cigarette company, the tobacco mm-hmm. industry, they do that in advertising. So mm-hmm. it looks like on, on your desk, you know, the makeup counter mm-hmm. is that an eyeliner, which it mm-hmm. looks like an eyeliner because mm-hmm. it's all and thin, but it's actually an e-cigarette. Like uh-huh. the highlighter looks like a highlighter, uh-huh. but it's actually not, it's an e-cigarette. Yeah. They have it that look like lipstick containers and, mm-hmm. um, Students are even getting creative. And we had, we captured one um, from one of our partners that they took Mm -hmm. the Sharpie marker out and put Mm -hmm. in an (gasps) easier. Oh my gosh. Well, I have so many questions about that. I mean, so if the parents are not educated, if parents and teachers don't know about these things, they're going to be clueless as to what their teens are doing. They're going to be like, oh yeah, they just have a lipstick or an eyeliner or highlighter in their backpack. And little do they know they're actually e-cigarettes and vaping pens. Wow. There's what even are... devices that look like um like drink cups with oh. a straw. Uh-huh. And like, the e-cigarette is hidden inside the straw. Oh my god. So you could, like you know we a lot of schools yeah. and my son takes a water bottle, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of schools we want our kids to stay hydrated, be mm-hmm. healthy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But are they using an e-cigarette? But you don't want to question every kid either with everything that they're doing, yeah. but it's really mm-hmm. becoming you know, what are you doing? They even have hoodies with the drawstrings, not in, <gasps> not the drawstring. It's a, attached to your e-cigarette. Oh my so gosh. Kind of t-shirt are they wearing? Are they just chewing on their drawstring? Uh-huh. So I think, you know, besides like, we don't want to critique everything our, our children do or our students mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot of the e-cigarettes, there's, you know, eight to 16,000 different flavors. I mean, you name a flavor, there's wow. a flavor. So mm-hmm. it does have a smell and the smell mm-hmm. will be on the clothes because it's an aerosol that comes out. Mm-hmm. So if you're seeing, and especially like at home or even within, we've had teachers say, I thought my eighth graders were finally like personal hygiene. Yes. I'm smelling cologne oh, no. and you know, deo- deo- deodorant sprays. This is great. Uh-huh. And it's actually, it was a group of kids that were using e-cigarettes and they were covering up the fruity smell, <gasps> the flavored smell uh-huh. um, with the cologne. Okay. This is this is scary. So in your experience, and I know you share that you have a teenager too. I do. I'm like 14 year old. <laughs> I've been in tobacco prevention for like for 20 years, but mm-hmm. I still go through my son's back, but he knows what I do. He's yeah. reviewed our curriculum. He's gone through, uh-huh. I mean, he, I've done everything. He's only 14. So uh-huh. obviously I've been in the same career. I still open his backpack <laughs> because, I'm like, yeah. because that's, that's who they're marketing to the average kid. Right. That's the other thing. It's different than cigarettes, right? Yeah. It's being marketed to your average student or your athlete because athletes are using them or your musician, your Mm -hmm. artist. It's different than the traditional cigarette and Mm -hmm. who that's marketed to. Yeah. So not only do we have teachers who are listeners of our podcast, we have parents and teachers who are also parents too. Um, So in your experience, what are some of the key warning signs or behaviors that, that teachers and parents should be vigilant about indicating some kind of like potential vaping involvement among teenagers, especially considering the covert nature of many vaping devices. Yeah. The big thing is um, one of the the things is the behavior change, because what we have to remember is that nicotine is an addictive drug. Mm -hmm. So kids are are easily with a high nicotine concentration, become addicted 
very quickly. It can be with just one puff off the e-cigarette because of the high concentration. So behavior change. One of the things, are they all of a sudden your calm child's now you know, very anxious and has a lot of anxiety? Are they going outside frequently during family events? Are they using the bathroom a lot? Um, that is the, one of the biggest signs is because they could be going through that nicotine withdrawal. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, even in, in the classroom, uh -huh. you know, maybe you have an A student, their grades are falling and you see them really, they're going to the bathroom a lot, or they have this anxious behavior change in, in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That's because they're coming off of the nicotine withdrawal uh -huh. and they're looking for the next nicotine fix. Wow. And so teachers have to kind of be aware of who's going to the bathroom frequently too, and what they're taking with them to the bathroom. What they're taking with them. And then there's mm -hmm. even, that, you know, who else is going to the bathroom at the same time? So I've heard of oh. some schools that are like, they've gone to a different type of almost like a device mechanism to mm -hmm. try to curb the vaping to where they have to like, I guess, use their phones or check them with a the teacher and the teacher, they monitor to actually how many students are mm -hmm. actually in the bathroom during a classroom time mm -hmm. and I for teachers because they have just like you, there's so much you have to do. Now you have to worry right. about one more thing what in the bathroom, right? So we had an incident over on the middle school um, a few years back where um, the parents had no idea, but they were giving their kids money. So they the students were taking cash to like a local drugstore um, like CVS, Rite Aid and buying um, like the credit cards, like the, you know, like the Visa and Master, right. Master cards. And they were going online and ordering vaping pens and then they were selling them to their their schoolmates, they were, you know, but they weren't doing it on campus, but they were just meeting at the local park after school, before school. And right. they were selling these. I'm like, oh, that's like drug dealing, like a drug dealing. But the parents had no clue because, I mean, I don't, well, when these pens, you know, when these vaping pens and e-cigarettes were arriving at their house, maybe they did look like highlighters and they thought, oh, my child is ordering pens and highlighters. And little did they know they're doing all of these things. Yeah, it's unfortunate. There's we've heard of several incidences where um, students are selling them on campus, there or even on campus, like mm -hmm. you, you, know, you said, off mm -hmm. campus. Some are happening on campus. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important that we educate parents because we've heard of stories where um, parents are having this buying them for the student to go their child to go sell at school. <gasps> and we've oh learned that through some of our training. That, and how did they find out? Because the student got caught. Uh -huh. So they get into this this whole issue of the child saying, well, my parents want me to sell it. But then of course the parent comes in. It's like, I never said that. Right. So that we even, can we take that a step further and say, well, what type of environment is that student going home to then? Mm -hmm. Because they didn't sell what they were supposed to. And then they got caught. <gasps> so there's, it's, we've heard mm -hmm. parents that are handing them out at slumber parties. I'm oh like, my God. Not a bag of tips, people. You know, right. I had a conversation with my son, just like, mm -hmm. there should be trusted adults where your kids are spending the mm -hmm. night at, you mm -hmm. know? Um, uh -huh. and, it's just because of how they're the, you know, the concept the misconception of how they're marketed. Mm -hmm. um, you have on our site for parents who are listening, teachers who are listening, you know, our catch my breath program is free. Mm -hmm. but we also have parent resources. Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. go to catchmybreath.org and see the plethora of parent resources. We have parent toolkits, how some of those signs, like you talked about, Nancy, like mm -hmm. what are some of those signs? Mm -hmm. How to identify, how can I tell if my child is using or how mm -hmm. do I even have that conversation with my child without accusing them? But I just right. I'm uh -huh. going to support them. I mean, and that leads right into the question that I was going to, I was, I was planning on asking you next is how can educators and parents foster open non-judgmental dialogues with their teenagers about vaping, creating environments where teenagers feel comfortable seeking guidance and support without fear of, um, some kind of a co negative consequence or being judged because I mean you have to kind of walk that fine line as a parent of a teenager or parents you know of any kids you want to make sure that you're not coming off just condemning them and just you know right and just judging them so even if like if if the kids maybe were curious and they tried it but they're kind of scared to tell their parents like how can we foster that kind of um that that relationship or that communication yeah, you know, that's great. And that's what exactly what some of the tools that we have on. I know you said you're in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. We've actually unfortunately heard of kindergartners coming in with the e-cigarettes. So although you're oh in K gosh. through two through five, you're not, uh -huh. you're not um someone's doing it somewhere. Unfortunately, that's Wait, where we are with our kids. Are they just bringing it in for like a show and tell, or are they really using it at that age too? 
Uh, the groups that we've heard that they're bringing them in to school. So I don't know if they're showing it like, oh, this My is gosh. really cool if they're yeah. actually not using it. Um, so we do have parent material for that K through four age group because it's really important mm -hmm. um, to start that conversation early. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then also to have the parents educated. If you're using e-cigarettes, keep them up away from your child. Mm -hmm. You know, put it away because it smells good, right? So they may mm -hmm. want to try it or oh, I want to be like mom or I want to be like mm -hmm. dad. So I want to try yep. my uncle, my cousin. I want to try it. Mm -hmm. um, so keep it up and keep it out, out of place and out of reach for them. And just really start to have those conversations early about, um, you know, that they're not healthy for you. They're, they're not good for you. And then what practicing those refusal skills or those exit strategies, how can I say no? It's, and, and, mm -hmm. and it's okay to do that. There's different ways. Um, mm -hmm. We have a workbook for parents to go through that, that was designed and created by a focus group of parents. Mm -hmm. What are some of those hard questions that you have with your students and then with your child? And then how can I address it with them? And I think some of the big takeaways is, you know, we never want to say, come on, Nancy, we need to talk. Mm -hmm. because what automatically happens, right? I don't want to hear that from anybody because I think, right. what did I do wrong now? It's defensive. Yeah, totally defensive. You know? mm -hmm. So it's just like, the unfortunately, e-cigarettes are in the news a lot, you know, mm -hmm. you just have general conversations of like, well, what do you know about e-cigarettes? Have you heard about e-cigarettes? Do you know anything about them? Mm -hmm. And just to start that conversation um, and build that trust and relationship, be in their okay. lives, you know, be involved right. with their school activities, know who their friends are, know who their mm -hmm. parents are, mm -hmm. you know, have those contacts. So just to be an involved parent mm -hmm. to continue those conversations. And I think one of the things for for teachers, uh, you know, teachers who could be parents or, you know, they're, they're with students, they're with our kids a long time during the week, right? Almost mm -hmm. sometimes more than us, except for their yes. sleep waking hours. Right, right. So, you know, it's okay for students. I think parents should realize too, it's okay for a, your child to have a trusted, who is another trusted adult that they could mm -hmm. talk to? Is mm -hmm. it the coach? Is it the teacher? Maybe it's the cafeteria work, the bus driver, mm -hmm. um, maybe it's their uncle to where it's a safe environment for them to talk, the student, the child to talk to somebody mm -hmm. without a cue, if it, because they're probably afraid of, I don't want to disappoint my mom. I don't right. want to disappoint my parents yeah. um, because I've done this or, mm -hmm. or I don't know how to talk to them about it because I don't want them just because I want to know about it. I don't want them to think that I'm doing it because I'm not. Oh, exactly. I'm uh huh. Mm -hmm. Right. Now you mentioned the resources that uh, Catch My Breath um, provides. What resources or support networks do you recommend for teachers and parents who may feel ill-equipped to address the complexities of the vaping epidemic among teenagers, particularly in terms of staying informed about the latest trends and effective intervention strategies? Yeah, so um, one again is the Catch My Breath program, especially for teachers. Mm -hmm. um, parents, we keep, our pro we keep our information for parents up to date um, as well and current mm -hmm. because we know if as well as our program, because if our program isn't up to date and current, kids aren't going to pay attention to it. That's going right, to be, that's that's gonna mm -hmm. be so beyond. Um, mm -hmm. So we do provide that for our teachers. Our curriculum and our website, our information for our parents and for our teachers is actually free. So there's no cost. So they can just freely go up and and research, mm -hmm. go through all of the curriculum and all of the factual information that we have. We have mm -hmm. some of our other partners, too, that we work with, including the American Lung Association has a lot of information mm -hmm. um, campaign for tobacco free kids, especially with laws and resources. Mm -hmm. And then there's um, a partner group that we work with, which is um, PAVE, Parents Against Vaping. Um, that's more on the policy and legal side, mm -hmm. but actually went to, to Congress and different things like that. So there's different groups and we have them as partners on our website okay. um, and as resources for parents to go through within um, our parent toolkit. And then if our teachers come to our page, we mm -hmm. have our, we have a plethora of information for them. And our program, like I said, always stays up to date and current. We even have different training modules for them to go through. And mm -hmm. if they go through some of our training, we go in depth a lot further. So they really get to learn more of that information, mm -hmm. um, more of that hands on some of what we were talking about, like what to look for, you know, how do I identify? Because I think one of the things too is parents, teachers, and just our community has to realize that our kids are addicted. It's not, they're, they're not bad kids. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do this. We're hearing from students that they want to help other students. They want to help, you don't, I mean, students are going to using e-cigarettes because they think that's the only crowd that they would fit in. And oh, I'm not saying this mm -hmm. as an adult. I'm saying this mm -hmm. from our students that we work yeah, with. Just, yeah. you know, they're like, they think it's the only place they have to go. They're like, no, we want to be your friend. We want to help you. Mm -hmm. We want to. And 
I think it's the students really care about each other mm -hmm. and I think they just need to help and just be active in their lives and, and mm -hmm. just really try to understand what they're going through. Yeah. Can you tell us what your website is for the listeners? Sure. It's catchmybreath.org. Okay. Easy. Easy. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So from your perspective, what are the most crucial pieces of advice or actionable steps that teachers and parents can implement immediately to mitigate the influence of vaping and create healthier environments for teenagers? Um, stay informed. Um, mm -hmm. you know, go to those reputable resources. Check out Catch my breath first um, and see the resources that we have. Uh, we often even get questions from parents like my son, my child's vaping, what do I do? Or I want mm -hmm. my child to, I wanna learn more. Can they go through your curriculum just as, you know, can I teach it to them? Mm -hmm. um, and for, for teachers, you know, just prevention, I think not only just teachers, but as school districts and administration, it's really prevention. If we can, pre we're not a prevention society, right? But if we can mm -hmm. prevent kids from happening instead of having to deal with, Let's cessation and how do we get kids off? You know, how do we get kids off of this? Let's mm -hmm. prevent it from happening. So start that education early. Our curriculum actually is in fifth grade. So we oh. have we <laughs> ended at elementary. So we have fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and then high school. Mm -hmm. um, we don't not only have lessons for classrooms, we have PE. So they mm -hmm. can do calisthenics, relay races, having fun and learning, trying to oh. really meet the students where they're at. Mm -hmm. STEM, humanities, there's different, there's videos, self-paced modules mm -hmm. um, that we've actually had some parents go through with their children so that the student can go through the self-paced module. Mm -hmm. um, and just there's resources out there. So don't be afraid to ask for help. And I think one of the things too is we have to remember that they're addicted. So not to have those punitive measures, right? It's like- right. There's a lot of schools sometimes because they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So let's, we need to send them to an alternative school if they're caught. It's like, mm -hmm. or send them home. And it's like, no, then you're, they're more encouraged to do it more. It's like, they need help. So give right. them cessation resources. Truth Initiative has a great cessation resource for them. So does the American Lung Association. Mm -hmm. We have some schools that actually do prevention with Catch My Breath, mm -hmm. cessation with either Truth or the American Lung Association. And then the American Lung Association also has an in-depth program for those who are caught with e-cigarettes, because if we send them, they need that education and that mm -hmm. help. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is amazing. I didn't know about this program, and I'm very excited to share this with yeah. uh, my followers on Instagram, but also my coworkers at you know at, on our Absolutely. campus as well. Now, Absolutely. Uh, I'm from so Southern California, and we have some of our, some other schools that are lucky enough to still have this program. We have the Dare program. But okay. it's, yeah, drug assist, drug abuse resistance education. But because of budget cuts, it has been cut from so many districts. And even within this program, vaping is just a very, very small portion of the education. But we, you know, they we learn a lot about like internet safety, road safety, and all of that stuff too. So I feel like the more we, like you said, stay informed, then the more we start early in educating these kids, um, you know, the the outcome will be much better. Absolutely. And one of the, the interesting facts, Dr. Stephen Calder, who's um, our professor who created our Catch My Breath program, mm -hmm. um, he was a senior scientific editor on the Surgeon General's report that came out in 2016 on e-cigarettes. Oh, when he was doing his research, he's like, are there any classes talking about prevention for e-cigarettes? And he couldn't find any. Mm -hmm. And he thought that vaping was going to be such an issue. He didn't want it embedded in another curriculum like in mm -hmm. DARE. Mm -hmm. That he thought we just needed to have one subset on just vaping e-cigarettes. I see. And yeah. we need it to, for those teachers that are out there, this meets your state health education standards. It meets mm -hmm. something that you have to facilitate anyway. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm sure my, my information will be out there, but you can outreach to us because it's something that meets a requirement that you have mm -hmm. to do. Um, there's four lessons, about 30 to 40 minutes each. Um, but one of the best pieces about this, because we're talking about kids, right? That's why we're here, right? It's mm -hmm. about the students. Is what we have. Mm -hmm. About our program is our youth empowerment model. Mm -hmm. So in every lesson, students get an opportunity to break out into peer led groups and mm -hmm. actually either have a conversation, lead that conversation within their group. Mm -hmm. They can do, um, maybe they're doing an activity. Um, and like, for example, in fifth and sixth grade, they're cre creating their own anti-e-cigarette marketing campaign by, you know, drawing pictures or doing mm -hmm. it on Canva or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Educate their peers mm -hmm. on the dangers of vaping. Then it's age appropriate. So we go into seventh and eighth grade, they're creating a, you know, an Instagram post or mm -hmm. a social media post. Mm -hmm. What would they say on social media? 
mm-hmm. to help educate their friends on e-cigarettes. Mm-hmm. And I love that. And that's one of the things that our we hear the most from our teachers and our students. They love that they feel it's a safe place. Yes. Because uh-huh. they're the ones, right, who mm-hmm. are affected in the bathrooms, that they can't mm-hmm. go to the bathroom in school because kids mm-hmm. are vaping. Right. And so I think kids will definitely listen to other kids. Right. Yeah. Both negative or positive, right? So if we yeah. can have it do it in a positive way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have any success stories of, or any stories of like um, personal stories that maybe a parent has shared or an educator has shared that um, that show the success of your program? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we do. We have some statistical data and then we have some from some stories that I'd like to share. So uh, we we are um, an evidence based youth vaping prevention program that actually shows not only in the students who go through our curriculum will have an increase in knowledge about the dangers and consequences of e-cigarettes, but there's a 45 percent less likely chance to try an e-cigarette. So mm-hmm. it's that behavior change, right? Because mm-hmm. that's what we want. We don't want them to try it. Mm-hmm. So those that's the, that's the statistical success of our story. We, we have data that proves that students who go through our curriculum will not try an e-cigarette, mm-hmm. which is, is great news. Um, we have several different uh, movements across different states. So we are in all 50 states across the country. Um, we have states that have adopted Catch My Breath to be implemented throughout all middle schools and all high schools. So for example, in West Virginia, um, we were just down in Idaho and there's an amazing group of students that have come together um, knowing and seeing how important this is with their peers. They've seen some of their friends turn to e-cigarettes and then they lose their friendship. They're not on the football team anymore. Mm-hmm. They have distress with their parents. Um, so they've taken it upon themselves to be trained in Catch My Breath and our, the high schoolers are now going into the middle schools mm-hmm. and helping the younger age students um, to be educated and showing a positive role model. Mm-hmm. And this does not only help the younger students from when the older students come in, but to hear how these high school students felt empowered mm-hmm. to really help each other mm-hmm. and really saw themselves like we can make a difference because we're out here to help each other. Wow. Mm-hmm. Which is really neat to see. We've also that. heard from some anecdotal stories from some teachers, mm-hmm. particularly a seventh grade student who w- went through Catch My Breath and then her and her friend, they're at her, her house and um, her brother came in and actually offered them an e-cigarette. Uh-huh. They were able to say no mm-hmm. because of what they had learned throughout oh. the program. Then and they, they came back to back share that story. Oh, they I love that. They came the story that they're like, uh-huh. oh, you know. Uh, we, uh-huh. met, we found out, you know, this is what happened. And we said no, because of what we learned through Catch My Breath. And we've had also some students uh-huh. who actually quit using e-cigarettes mm-hmm. after learning about the dangers that's wow. in, in the mm-hmm. chemicals. And those we are making a difference. It's one by one, but we are making yes, a difference. Yes, absolutely. And when we hear these like anecdotal stories, we're like, it is working. We're, <laughs> you know, we're out there trying to empower these kids and they're actually using it, using these skills and uh-huh, like these life lessons and it's working. And oh my gosh, I, I would love it when a student, if a student came back and shared those stories with me. And one, one student at a time, you know, that's it. Exactly. One student at a time. Exactly. Um, to hear how they just really care about each other and want to help each other. It's just so it's so it's empowering for me mm-hmm. to hear with the students. Absolutely. OK, so uh, on our on our podcast, we have a segment called Tag Your It, where our listeners write in with a question and we answer them here on the show. And today's question comes from Marissa B. And her question is, if you can pick one bad thing that could actually turn out to be good for you. What would it be? Mine would be ice cream. <laughs> I can kill you with that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh-huh. Just say chocolate, because that's just right about the same alley, right? It's like, what, what do you mean? Chocolate is good for you. <laughs> dark chocolate in moderation. Everything yes. in moderation, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe it's that second cup of coffee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Would you just pick chocolate and coffee? Anything else? Chocolate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Okay. These these questions are always fun. It kind of catches our guests off, you know, off guard sometimes. Oh wait, what? I know exactly. I, yeah. I'm like ice cream, of course. <laughs> Marcella, thank you again for being such an amazing guest on the Schoolyard Podcast. It was a true pleasure having you on our show. I can't wait to check out your website and tell all my coworkers and friends about this too. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, 
And can I give my tagline if my email? Of course, yes. To, yes. So please, um, please. just one last thing, you know, check out mm -hmm. catchbybreath.org for more information. Um, if you have any specific questions regarding the program or the resources that we have, or if you're a parent, um, you can feel free to reach out to me at Marcella, which is M-A-R-C-E-L-L-A -L -L -A, at catch.org. Yeah, great. Thank you. Once again, that was catchmybreath.org. And I was told that there's also a Spanish version of the resources available. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Schoolyard Podcast. Remember to pack your curiosity and meet us back in the schoolyard for our next episode. Tag, you're it. Now it's your turn to write in with a question, which we will answer here on the Schoolyard Podcast for our segment called Tag, You're It. Tag us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter at School Specialty and hashtag Schoolyard Tag Your It with a question that you want answered. One question will be selected per episode to be answered by our featured guest and myself. If your question is chosen to be answered on the podcast, we'll send you a very special Schoolyard Podcast t-shirt. Class dismissed.